What's up everyone? Today we are talking about the power of daily movement and how Yanni and I, but mostly myself, how I've used it to turn around from being addicted to drugs and alcohol with very little direction in my life in my 20s to being an exceptional mover and successful business owner in my 40s. Stick around. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. What's up everyone? Yanni Bormeister here. We're recording for the Sound of Movement podcast and I'm here with my brother Rad, as usual, and Richie behind the production desk. Uh, we are Unity Gym and the UMS Movement uh, System. Uh, Today we've got a great discussion going on and um, we are going into a deep dive into some personal stories, aren't we, Rad? Yeah, absolutely. We're going to, um, look, we're talking about the health hierarchy of needs. And for those of you that haven't been listening, we've created, uh, just like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we've created the health hierarchy of needs. The five pillars that we've identified need to be taken care of in order before progressing to the next one. Uh, before people, for people to achieve great success. So if you don't know what they are at the bottom, we've got motivation. After you've developed a burning desire for your, for your goals, for what you wanna do, we can move on to daily movement habit. Then we can move up to nutrition, tackling nutrition. And only once we've got those three in uh, check, then we can move on to physique, developing a healthy physique. And then finally, we can move to movement mastery. And what we're doing today, yesterday and today, we're talking about a the, the daily, the power of daily movement practice and daily movement habit. And in all honesty, I didn't know if we were gonna have you here today, Yanni, because if you could see Yanni's eye, it is full on he looks like he's got um you know the worst case of pink eye you've ever seen but he's got a little well we're going to find out soon because he's got a doctor's doctor's appointment in 40 minutes but um we we think that yanni's aggravated an an old a little bit of scar tissue on his eye from when one of his kids scratched his eye but it is so red and swollen and it's watery and everything and I didn't think it was going to be on the show. So I thought I was going to be talking uh, just about my story. But the truth is, Yanni and my story is, uh, is, is intertwined here. We both have a very similar uh, background. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to get started with mine and we'll see, um, you know, when, how, how Yanni wants to come in um, with that. But, you know, basically we're, we're talking about, you know, once you've got on the road to health, fitness and finally movement mastery, we want, uh, actually I should probably say it the other way, on the road to fitness, health, then movement mastery. We, um, on the second part of the, of the health hierarchy of needs is, is a daily habit of uh, movement. And I wanna talk to you about my personal experience with that. So when I was in my uh, late teens and into my 20s, I developed a, a terrible um, drug and alcohol addiction. And it's taken me a long time to feel confident to talk about that. Probably because I've totally beaten it that I feel confident about talking about it. I was very ashamed of myself. And you, you know, when you have a drug and alcohol addiction, you also have a very dishonest life because you lie to people all the time. Um, I don't know that there's, I've never met anybody that's in the midst of a drug and alcohol addiction that is honest about it. People are, you know, they, they front during the daytime to, to try and make themselves look like they're a normal functioning person, but then they've got these, these horrible addictions that go on in the evening or on the weekends. And I was no different. And the only, the, the only thing that I could, I, I had an innate, I, I didn't know what I know now. I didn't know that what I was doing was, was uh, you know, had a lot of, um, has a lot of weight behind it. But I just had this feeling that if I wasn't practicing back then, it was Kung Fu and um you know i started to learn calisthenics as well i just had this feeling that if i wasn't doing some kind of movement and really trying to pursue excellence in that field that i was really really going to end up in a bad place so i i pushed myself to do that and the only way i was ever able to really you know get a hold on this thing and beat it and 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 knock it out of the ballpark and and turn it into something that seems like a distant memory now was through replacing it with the healthy habit of uh, movement, of daily movement. It was through, you know, creating a, an obsession with movement, you know, something that I could channel that, um, you know, addictive nature into. 
um, that I was able to really turn my life around and, and turn myself into someone, you know, that I'm proud of being now rather than someone who I was really ashamed of you know when i was at my worst we should just for those of you that are watching i got richard i shared a picture with richard when i was at my worst richard do you want to bring this picture up on the screen and we'll have a look now we've got a little delay on the screen so i can't tell if it's up yet or not but i'll start talking about it this picture was taken when i was in east timor in 2009 and i joined the army in 2008 when i was 30 i was at my worst but i did you know probably get worse for the next year or so I didn't I didn't change my habits um, straight away um, and it, it's funny to look back on this picture um, I would have been um, can you make it a little bit bigger Richie yeah yeah that's it nice um, I would have been if you look at my face um, the, my face is a, is a big telltale for me if I look at the camera now so you can see me I'm a lot um, slimmer in my face than I was then and that's from inflammation so I was suffering chronic inflammation in my body as you can see how my face was all puffy but I was really really out of shape I didn't have good muscle tone in my body and I was definitely probably five or eight kilos overweight um, I would have been about 15 minimum 15 or 16 percent body fat there uh, I was I was probably as heavy as I am now, but not in nearly as good shape. And I actually got worse than that. Um, when I got back, I just don't have a picture of myself when I got worse. But because that was when I was over in East Timor and we couldn't drink alcohol or anything like that. But when I got back from East Timor, um, I started drinking heavily. And when I say drinking heavily, I, I mean like, you know, I'd get home and drink, you know, anywhere from three to six beers after work. And on the weekend, I'd go through a case of beer over a whole weekend. I was just, I was just in a in a um, you know in a, a place of my life where Sounds like a saint uh, in comparison to half of the um, country. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably, may, maybe, but that but that is an addiction. You know, it was happening every day, um, and uh, yeah, it was a it was a it was terrible. It was a really bad place of my life um, that I was in, and. Yeah. Um, uh, and I could see that I was heading to a really, really bad place. I was, I was wise enough to foresee that if I didn't make a massive change that I was going to end up in a, in a really bad place. And, and what I want to talk about today is how movement and the habit of movement is what saved me. That is without a doubt what what turned it around for me and this is why it's where it is on the hierarchy of needs yeah. because it's the as we've said this a dozen times and we'll continue to say it it's the it's the lowest hanging fruit it's the first big win that someone can achieve and you know um uh changing your your destiny or your outcome is very much about accumulating small wins yeah you know you can't try to make the huge win in one giant leap it just never works it never works out well for people and so we got to look at ways of accumulating small wins and the daily habit of exercise is is by far and large the the, the easiest one to to get uh mm. ear, especially early you know because there are all these little things that occur when you start to exercise regularly you know you start to feel better you build confidence you start to think with clarity you know there's all these little things that you don't really take into consideration when you think about exercising but you notice 100 percent after you've started exercising and they help to build momentum yeah and, you know well, you don't realize how much like, you know, it's like, um, Steve, you were talking about this the other day, but it's like what Steve Jobs said in that Harvard graduation speech where you can't connect the dots until you look back. But so I, I didn't I know. I don't know if it was Harvard, but it was. Oh, whatever it was. It was, you know, speech, but yeah, that, it's yeah, that famous yeah. speech of Steve yeah. Jobs that you can see on YouTube if you're Stanford, maybe it was or whatever the hell it was. Who cares? Yeah, um, if it. you Google it on YouTube, if you Google um, Steve Jobs, um, you know, university speech, there's a part of it where he says, Looking forward, you can't connect the dots, but when you look back, you can. And I couldn't see how I was going to turn everything around looking forward. I just couldn't. And when you're in this, when you're in the midst of a drug Stanford. and alcohol, Stanford, yep. There you go. Look at that. Stanford. See? Um, when you when you look forward. The 2005 like, Stanford commencement address, yeah. just in case anyone's looking That's for it. That's a really, really good speech to watch. You should check it out. Sh share it, Yanni, in I the will. comments. So the... Um, you know, looking forward, I could never understand how I was going to turn my life around, but I knew that I needed to do something and I knew that I needed to stop taking 
drugs and alcohol. I knew that there was n there was no way I was ever going to be successful if I couldn't. And when you when you do have a drug and alcohol addiction, you go through this perpetual cycle where, you know, you you trash yourself on the weekend. You wake up the next day and you just feel so low. The depression and the the way that you're feeling, you just think, oh my god, how did I do it again? You know, and it always starts with. Um, a couple of drinks, you know, it always, you, like it's very rare. Well, when you're a teenager and, you, and you're in your early 20s, it's really different. You plan for these nights, like you plan it with your friends. But once you, you, you pass that point where it's that exciting, it's something that always happens after you get a few drinks under your belt, you know. Somebody makes a suggestion or you make the suggestion and it turns up being into a big night. Um, and that's why for this year, why I completely eliminated alcohol, even having a couple of drinks, because I identified that alcohol was my trigger for everything bad that I ever do in my life. But what happens with exercise? So on the contrary, so you, you, you go out, you have some drinks, you eat shit food, you take drugs, you have a late night, you do whatever it is that you do that's bad, you wake up feeling like shit yeah. and you beat yourself up for the next week where I don't care who you are. If you drink heavily on the weekend, you are paying for it for the whole week. But people don't realize it. No, this they is don't. The problem. They don't. When you're in the this perpetual the cycle That's of exactly it. That's yeah. exactly right. Especially because most people have been doing it since they were a youth. Yeah. So they've never experienced, you what know, what it's like. What it's clean. like. And yeah. we had this yeah. experience with one of my clients here who I work with on a one on one basis, who's a CEO of a, a company here in North Sydney. And he had never gone, he's in his 50s, and he'd never gone without alcohol. Yep. Since a uh, since youth, you yep. know, and I convinced him to start with um, Dry July and he got a roll on and he ended up going for three or four months without alcohol. And six months, I think. Uh, yeah, maybe it was, like it was five six or months, six, yeah. yeah. The, the guy was a different person and yep. he said it on a daily basis. He said, I cannot believe... How different, how different I feel, I feel. Yeah. how much more clarity I have, yeah. how much more productive I am, you know, yeah. it just it completely transformed him yep. as a human being. And yep. th I think this is something that I like challenge anyone to do. Yep. You know, you and I have gone for 12 months without alcohol mm -hmm. and, um, uh, it, yeah, it really, it's quite phenomenal. Yeah. I'm, I'm at a point in my life now where what I'm feeling now from not drinking, like, and, I'm not, I'll never not drink. Uh, I'm not saying I'll never drink again. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to say that, but I am not a drinker anymore. I've, yeah. I've made that clarification. Yeah, it's interesting. I was just in the doctor's surgery, uh, filling out their form, you know, their questionnaires and I tick the non-drinker box. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you normally, like, you normally tick that two to three drinks a week or yeah, whatever it yeah, is or something like right, that, you know, you know. but so if we if we go to the on the contrary if we go to like so you know you drink alcohol you you take drugs you have a big night you have bad food you feel shit for it and you beat yourself up on the contrary you do a workout forgetting forget the health and uh, benefits that come from it from long term forget it you do a workout it empowers you yeah whoever did a workout effect. and spent the rest of the day going oh my god why did i do that fucking workout i can't believe i did that why did i do that to myself who does that yeah. you don't do it it has the complete opposite effect yeah. it empowers you and when you do that like one workout does that for you just yeah. one man when you get into the daily habit yeah. of exercise it is unbelievable and it gets to a point where what happens is you start putting yourself to bed based on the workout that you have to do tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. And you start saying no to things because you, and you don't even, no one needs to, there goes, there's a period of time where you have to twist your arm. Mm. And you go, oh, do I want to go out with my friends or do I want to, no, I don't know. But after a while, like where I'm at now, it's no question. Yeah. People say to me, it's funny, on, um, on Saturday night, somebody contacted me on Facebook when I had just finished watching that movie and it was 11.30, it was so much later than I've been up in a long time. I started this movie at 9.30 and this friend was doing a FaceTime and they were at a party and they were, you know, dancing and raving and, like, oh man, you got to come over, you got to come over. And I was just like, no, no <laughs> way, man, I'm going to bed. That's it. But the old yeah. me, would have just I would have gone. Like, yeah. I would have gone. I wouldn't yeah. have, I would have thrown look, caution I, into the I've wind. I've found know? a formula that really works for me and it's going to be slightly different for everyone. I find that when I go on vacation somewhere, usually overseas or to Bali or wherever else, um, I don't mind having a few drinks and, it, and it's totally fine. It affects me differently and I'm not trying to be productive in those times. I'm just trying to spend quality time with family, friends, things like that. Uh, but when I'm around my environment, my work, where I'm striving to be the best version of myself, yeah, the two just don't work. And well, I am well aware of that. Well, you know? I think the way you describe this to me makes a lot of sense, which is that 
Um, your stress is like a cup. It's like a chamber that it, it, it can handle so much before it overflows. And work is a stress that's at, that add that pours a little bit into the cup. Not getting enough sleep is a stress that pours a little bit into the cup. Kids are a stress. As much as relationships are amazing and, of course, great for us, there, there's also a little bit of a stress there. There's all these things that are a stress. And alcohol is a stress. It's, it, a, it's, a, stress it's a huge stress on the body. It's not a relaxant. It's the old minute on the lips forever on the hips. The moment when you drink it and you sit down, it's relaxing. But the detoxification that occurs after that, the fact that you almost always go to sleep in a state of detoxification when you're drinking, so your body is, instead of regenerating, it's detoxifying the alcohol. Um, so well, it makes actually, sense. Let, let, uh, let, allow me to go a little bit deeper on there. Once the body converts alcohol to acetaldehyde, it has to convert acetaldehyde, which is a phenomenally toxic chemical to the body. Mm. It destroys every major organ in the body, acetaldehyde. Mm. Yep. Your body um, rampantly tries to convert acetaldehyde to something that it can metabolize and convert to energy. And what it does is it converts acetaldehyde to acetate. And acetate can then be converted. It's a very potent fuel source. But here's the catch. The body only has produces enough enzymes in the liver to convert a very small amount of acetaldehyde to acetate at any one time. And they've worked out that the average size person, it is roughly two standard drinks, which is why we become so heavily intoxicated after we have a few drinks, because the body just can no longer metabolize that alcohol. We've run out of the enzymes, the, the, the building blocks that are required to break it down and convert it in the, in the liver and in the digestive system. And it takes days for our body to replenish that. So what happens is the body, the process of converting the alcohol to acetaldehyde continues, but what happens is that acetaldehyde remains in the bloodstream for a long period of time. And while it's in the bloodstream, it's causing severe damage to the major organs in the body, including your skin, including your heart, including your eyes, including your kidneys, and of course, your liver. Yeah. So it's not just about, oh, okay, we're going into a state of detoxification and we're not really sleeping properly. We're also causing severe catastrophic damage to the major parts of our body that don't actually heal. The liver is the only organ in the body that really regenerates itself over a lifetime. The rest don't. Mm. They accumulate damage until yeah. they fail. Yeah. So, you know... We're, we're talking about the, the daily habit of, of movement. If you haven't, uh, if you've just tuned in here, we're talking about how the, a daily habit of movement practice turned me from being addicted to drugs and alcohol in my 20s uh, and even in my early 30s to being, you know, uh, completely free of those addictions and um, in the best shape of my life and a successful business owner in my 40s. And you know the we're talking about the power of habit and the power of a positive habit so can can i just quickly um interject because i think it's really important that we reinforce what you said before because this is the aha moment for everybody when you do something negative that's negatively producing a result in your life whether that's to drink alcohol take drugs eat junk food it's something that is moving you away from your goals something happens in the body, in your psychology, the hormones that are released that are in uh, that are intoxicated by that thing, that that drug. The, the, what you got to understand is most of these things hijack the dopamine receptors in the body, and so there is this physical, physiological reaction that wants you to do more of that thing that wants you to go further down that negative path, lead you further astray from really where you want to be, what, what's going to make you feel good about yourself. And that's really important to understand because the complete opposite happens when you exercise. Mm. And this is the reason, this is the drum that we want to bang home today that I think everyone needs to walk out of this session or this podcast recording with a full understanding of. Yep. When uh, everyone can relate to the fact, you know, you have a bad night, you have a bender and you wake up the next day and you tend to eat crappy food. You know, because your body's chasing a dopamine hit that's, that's going to come exactly, close to what exactly you had last right. night. Because you, you, you feel so much worse than you did the day before you, when you started drinking, when you felt, you know, 
relatively normal. Now you feel so much below that and your body goes, give me something to feel better. Yeah. And that's why we will go for the junk food, the sugary, fatty, that's salty right. combinations. Logically, logic or, would suggest... Or more alcohol. Yeah, logic would suggest that you, at that point, when you feel your lowest, would make a calculated decision to do something better for yourself. But this, is, this proves my point. Mm. The fact that we don't is because you're... Your, your neuropeptide receptors in your body are being hijacked by chemicals that are carefully crafted to do that, yeah. you know? And um, the worse the drug that you use, the harder you feel it the next day, yeah. you know, or the more of the drug that you consume. Yeah. Uh, and it can be bad food. Bad food has the same effect. It's on a slightly lower um, uh, level than a class five drug like cocaine or heroin or something like that or even alcohol but it still has the same effect if you have a binge on crappy food of a day the next day you find it really hard not to follow up on that because yeah. you're chasing the dopamine hit again yeah. and what we want you to understand is that the same happens from exercise but in the opposite manner yeah. you get a feeling of fulfillment you get endorphins and if you do it properly you'll get dopamine as well unfortunately yeah. i beat at a much lower dosage yeah. but it can become addictive in the same way yeah oh it absolutely can and not only can it um it will and this is this is why this step comes after the motivation after creating the burning desire because for the first few weeks maybe even months it's going to be really hard to not go back to the alcohol, to the drugs, to the fast food that gives you that quick fix when you feel down. And you will feel down. There'll yeah. be time, you're not going to feel good all the time. You're gonna go through times where you feel down. And if you haven't created that burning desire, if you're not 100% clear on what it is that you're trying to do, then at those moments of being down, you're gonna to turn to the quick fixes again. Yeah. And I did that for 10 years, 12 years, I don't even know how long. It was yeah. well over a decade, well over a decade. I had no strategy in place. All I had was a, was a goal that I wanted to change, but I had no strategy for how to do it. And for me, I had to join the army. That was the only way that I could, I, I just, the only thing that I knew is that I needed to develop a higher sense a, of a discipline. A pattern disruptor. Yeah, a, a pattern disruptor, pattern and, a, disruptor. And, a, and a higher, um, and a sense of discipline that I didn't have, but also a sense of value for what I had at my fingertips. And I knew that the army would give me that. I knew that the army would show me that what I had with freedom, with the ability to make my own choices and do what I wanted would make me realize, wow, I need to make better choices. And it did. It did that for me. I, don't, you don't, know, I don't know. I don't know if I agree with the fact that you went into that thinking like that. I know I guarantee you I did, that mate. you come out of it. I guarantee you I yeah, did. Yeah, really? Yeah, I guarantee you I went in thinking like that. <laughs> well, I remember I was by your side when we went through the whole yeah, process but I didn't, of application. Yeah, but I, I didn't tell everybody my reasons yeah, for going in. fair enough. But I was very clear on that. Yeah. But uh, you don't need to join the army, and I absolutely would not recommend anybody to join the army. It's a horrendous place and a horrendous experience. Um, what you can do is by you know following these steps, you can turn your life around. And you need what what people need to understand is that almost everybody on the health hierarchy of needs is here for the fourth or fifth step. Yeah. That's why they start exercising. That's yeah. why they join this group. They either want to become healthy fitter or something like physique we chose the word physique because it encompasses health and fitness and looking good it's not about we're not saying physique like be a bodybuilder that's not what we're saying we're saying being in a healthy body having yeah. a healthy physique and we we threw around a couple of different words but we decided to settle on physique so whether your goal is that you want to feel better whether you, whether you ever want to come chronic pain whether you want to better health whether you want to look better yeah. you know whether you want to build lean muscle whether you want to lose fat that's all physique yeah. One, one thing I want to say, sorry, sorry right. to jump in, because this is really important. You can achieve an incredible physique and be really unhealthy. Yeah. Most of the yeah. time in your mind, and this mm -hmm. is why the motivation component is so important to get right first. What motivates you and drives you to a healthy physique, you really need to think about that. Because if it's superficial and if it's based on other people's desires, needs and wants, like yeah. how you want to look to someone else, you often end up with an amazing physique and really sick in the head. And mm -hmm. I've, I know a lot of people that have done that, myself included, mm -hmm. where I looked arguably the best I've ever looked, but I 
punished my body to get there. I beat myself up. I was in a lot of pain and discomfort all the time because my motivation was wrong. It was about how I looked to other people. I didn't mm. care about how I felt inside. And so I sacrificed how my body performed and felt in, 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 with this like desire to make myself look good and peacock to other people. And there's a lot of people out there who achieve a desirable f physique for the same reasons. Uh, they're peacocking. They want to look good to other people, but they do it as a sacrifice to how they actually feel inside. And what tends to happen is they hit an inflection point or a breaking point where it all comes crumbling down. Yeah. And they're the people that you see one year and go, my God. God, you're a figure model or a bodybuilder or, mm. you know, you could be on the front of men's health. And then two or three years later, they're fat as fuck. Yeah. They're, they've fallen off the wagon big time, big time. because they either injure themselves really seriously and can't exercise anymore. Mm. They, they ignore that pain in the body or they hit a point with their psycho psychology and mental health that it all just it implodes on them, you know. And I've been there. I speak from experience. Yeah, I'm just going to say good morning to my wife. Good morning, sweetheart. I can see that you just tuned in. I hope you're on your way coming to train with us very soon. Yeah, I saw Kalisha's just walking yeah, in the Yeah, Kalisha's here. Yep, yeah, so are the kids here as well? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, they were here. Yeah. So come on up, baby. Um, uh, yeah, look, it's, that's why we say health should be measured by the way you move and feel, not just by the way you look. Yeah. Yeah. And well, you know, and it's also why we put motivation at the very front yep. because we want you to establish a healthy burning desire, a burning desire. That's about you. It's not about anyone else. Mm -hmm. It's about, it might be about you and your family. It might be about you and your tribe, but it's not about, okay, I have to look better than that person or I have to look the same as that person or this and that. And there's nothing wrong with standing on stage there, but I've spoken to some of the best bodybuilders in the world who say that they stopped because of the fact that they were doing it for the wrong reasons. Well, and these are people that have achieved Olympia stage status. Well, you know? that's um, Ben Pakulski, who's a friend of ours, has said on this show, we asked him, we said, why did you stop um, professional bodybuilding? And he said, because I don't have the same insecurities that I had when I started. And he said, I worked for 15 years. I worked harder than anyone could. He said, that was the one thing I did better than everybody else. I, I outworked them um, in Gold's Gym down at um, Venice Beach. And uh, he, but he said, once I got on stage for the Mr. Olympia, the, I was at the pinnacle of the bodybuilding um, industry. Um, I felt empty. Yeah, I didn't feel a sense of satisfaction. He said, I said, I felt, of course, I felt a bit of a sense of satisfaction, but it went very, very quick. And then I felt a sense of emptiness. Yeah. So if you can get to that level with like the ultimate level of physique and feel empty, it's probably not the best thing to be chasing. But, but that's not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today is the because we've we got to bring this in for a landing is the power of a daily movement habit. Now, I want to bring it back to what Yanni and I have gone through and what the topic of this show is, which is um, I, I would I would bet that a lot of our listeners can relate to having a drug and alcohol addiction. And you've got to understand what an addiction means. A lot of people are in real denial that they've got an addiction. An addiction is something that you can't go without. It doesn't need to be a daily thing. It just means it's something that you can't go without. So if you find, if you have a group of friends that you go and hang out with them and you can't spend time with that group of friends without drinking and potentially taking drugs, you're addicted. Yeah. Even if that happens once a week or once every two weeks, that's an addiction. Yeah. And, and if, if, even if it happens once a month. Yeah. And if you want to you prove know. us wrong, prove it to yourself. Yeah. Go out, go out three times in a row with that same group of friends whilst they get on drugs and alcohol and don't do it. Yeah. See how you feel. See, see if you can do it. And if you, so if you're, if you're wanting to get to that physique or movement mastery, if you want to get to that upper level and you've ticked the box of motivation, but you're still struggling with all these other things in your life, I guarantee you the thing that's going to have the biggest roll on effect, the biggest roll on effect is a daily movement practice. It will roll on to everything else. You should tackle that before you try to get rid of alcohol. You should tackle it before you try to completely dramatically change your nutrition habits. See, the thing is, everything we talked about hormonally that's beneficial to the exercise or a detriment when you take drugs or um, eat um, heavily processed engineered food, 
You don't get any of this when you eat healthy food. Unfortunately, it's that that's part of the reason why we want you to eat really whole natural foods. It doesn't hijack your dopamine receptors. It's the heavily, heavily crafted, engineered combination of sugar, salt, and fat that do that in food. And so when you remove that, when you don't eat processed foods, you don't get any of that. So you don't get the benefit, you don't, but the problem with that is you don't get the, the really good feeling, the, do, the endorphin release after you get, after you do a good workout. You don't get that when you have a healthy meal, yep. you know? So unfortunately, um, you just don't get the same momentum when you start eating really healthy, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. So... Listen, we're going to um, we're we're, we're going to uh, Yanni's got to get off to a to doctor's appointment for his eye now. Um, but yeah, look, I, I, the whole purpose of today's show was to share my story and share with you guys how I literally used the daily habit of movement to be the stepping stone, the the building block, the foundation that built the rest of my ideal life um, around me. You know, I never would have met my phenomenal wife who's on the show now if I didn't do this, if I didn't use this to create, you know, my body, my life, who I am, that wasn't somebody that was, you know, ruled by these addictions and and in that horrendous state. Richard, can you bring up that picture again for those people that just joined in? Um, in this horrendous state of health that you can see here. The funny thing is that you might think it looks horrendous, but most people watching this, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys, will not agree with you. Yeah, they might not. They might not. But honestly, compared to what I'm like now, this this, this is bad health. Yeah. You know, this, this, this is not, he, a he knows person. that he was in a bad state of health. But when you look at that picture, a lot of you are going to think that doesn't yep. look that bad. But do you know what you've got to understand about that? Uh, that, that picture was me. That's when I wasn't drinking alcohol because I was yep. in East Timor and I was exercising ferociously daily. Yeah. So I was, because I was in the army, so we were exercising phenomenally. So to look like that, exercising the way that I was exercising, but not, uh, and not drinking alcohol, when I got back to Australia and started drinking alcohol and wasn't exercising as intensely as I was when I was over in East Timor, man. Yeah, Simon Morgan saying, totally agree, Yanni, yeah. Yeah, yeah look, yeah, look, it Simon, means that, a lot that, to that, Rad. That's at age 30 as well though, brother. Yeah. It doesn't that's matter. Not, yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's, um, trust me, man. You yeah. look at that yeah. photo. It doesn't. It doesn't have the impact that you're hoping uh, for. Well, yeah. com- compare it to what I look now. Yeah. Like now, it doesn't. For those of you on the podcast, he's showing a picture of himself at his worst physical state. Uh, uh, that he's got a photo. No, of. yeah, it's just that uh, I've got a photo. Of. Got a photo I got worse, of, than but that. it really doesn't look as bad as he thinks it looks. Uh, and fair enough. Um, fair unfortunately, enough. both Rad and I struggle to find photos of when we've been really out of shape. I've got a couple of dad bod photos where I'm about eight kilos of fat heavier than I am now, but people will still look at it and go, what? I can still see your abs. Like, yeah, but the unfortunate you know, thing about that is that 66% of Australians are now overweight. Well, so that's become is, yeah, normal. We have extremely so, high so, standards. Yeah. So Roger, thanks mate. And, um, happy, uh, happy to share my story, mate. Yeah. Look, I want to motivate people and I want people to see, uh, Yanni and I want people to see us as real people that have real stories, not um, you know people that stand up on a pedestal that have un, um, unattainable go- you know physiques and unattainable goals. We're normal people just like everybody else, and we've struggled. And we've both to used get exercise to, where we are. to overcome yep. our uh, issues. Exercise was, you know, for us the um the 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 tool that we used and the problem is now um sort of 16 to 20 years into our journey we identify that initially when we started exercising we probably had the wrong motivator and that's why we're creating this system and this course which starts with the motivation and burning desire because if you can start to think about the big picture macro picture from the very start you'll probably save yourself a bit of pain down the track. Both yep. Rad and I have beat ourselves up. We've got a lot of injuries that we're having to work around now because we had, you know, slightly the wrong motivation. Rad's motivation initially was very competitive and mine was the same, but, and mine was about impressing other people. Um, uh, Rad's not so much maybe, but, um, you know, either way we trained in a manner that was sacrificial to our 
performance at times. Mm-hmm. You know? You're going to miss your doctor's yeah, appointment. i got to go. Let's go. wrap it up. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for another kick-ass at-home workout yep. at 7 a.m. Sydney yep. time. And we're going live tomorrow to the UMS yes. m- uh, uh, online, online coaching, coaching group. Online coaching group. And That's then on right. Thursday to the gym. So trial. we will see you again on this show on Friday for Physio Friday. See you later, Good everyone. work, everyone. Hey, thanks for watching that video. If you liked it, consider subscribing to our channel and make sure you click the notification bell so you know when our weekly videos are uploaded. Now, the best thing for you to do if you want to stay connected with us and get free online coaching is to join our private Facebook group. It's called the UMS Movement Mastermind and we go live daily where we answer our members' questions. It's very interactive because you can post questions while we're live and we interact with you on the show. You can also upload videos or pictures of yourself with any movements, any stretches, strength training movements, calisthenics, weightlifting, anything that you're struggling with, and we'll critique you, give you feedback, let you know how you can get better. It's a really valuable resource. It allows a lot of communication with us and also our senior tribe members. You'll get answers very, very quickly, and it's absolutely free. So jump on Facebook, search for UMS Movement Mastermind, and join now. Until next time, have a great day.